In this video, I'll show you how to build this elegant multi-step data entry form where a user can add their details across several steps and all their information will be saved automatically in a table. It's fully customizable, but this is an advanced video with five key steps, so make sure you don't skip around. Let's get into it. The first step is to have an Excel file, which is basically going to be where you store all of your entries. So right here, each of these columns is going to be a separate entry in the pop-up for the first name, the last name, and all of these other ones. So feel free to modify it according to your needs. Up top, we're gonna have this new entry button where when we click on it, the pop-up is going to show up with the data entry form. Obviously right now it doesn't do anything, but by the end of the video, it's gonna be working correctly. Once we have the Excel file set up, the second step is to work on the design of the data entry form. You can either design it here in Excel simply by going to insert and just adding a few different shapes from here. So I could add one right here and this maybe is like the input box and I have a few of these but I find it a lot easier to design this stuff in PowerPoint and simply import it into Excel after. So here we are in PowerPoint and what I would need to do here is just add one big shape. So this would be for let's say step one then we're gonna add all of the details in here and duplicate it for step two and step three. So within this area, let's say I just changed the fill color to a white and I'm just gonna add a few different text boxes. So this would be one right here. This would be, let's say the personal details. And right below that, we would have three different shapes. These would be three circles. So it would be like the step one, let's say, and then control shift, drag that to the right for step two and step three, we can also add lines in between those. So it would be with this button right here. I think you kind of start to get the idea and this would be like step one going over to step two. And then down below, we would have all of the different entry points. So right here, it would be the first name. And let me actually align this one over to the left hand side. And within it, you would have the first shape, right? So right here below this, we could add a shape. So I'm just gonna put um, insert a rectangular shape right here so that the user knows where exactly they need to put their name and same thing with all of these other ones. That's a basic idea. I'm just gonna fast forward how I do this and show you the final result. Awesome, so this is what it would look like for the first part. This is the personal section and now I can just control shift and drag that to the right for the second part. Let's say this is like the work experience section. And obviously feel free to customize this however you like. The key difference is that we now need to move on. So this shape should be as the second one. So it would be filled in that same blue color. So it's this blue right here. The font color, sorry, is going to be this white. And same thing over here, this part would be in the blue color. So basically we just want it to move forward, right? Same with the outline right here. And you can see how it's gone from step one to step two. Same thing goes over with page number three. It's gonna look something like this and feel free to change it around depending on your needs. One final step in the design process is adding some buttons on the bottom to navigate forward or backwards. So these could be something like this with the next and the previous buttons. I haven't added them inside of each page yet. That's something we'll do later in Excel directly. Moving up to step three, and this is where we'll actually create the data entry form. And for this, we just wanna go back to the original Excel file and then head over to the developer ribbon. If you can't find it, just go to any other ribbon like the home one right click and click on customize the ribbon. When you do on the right hand side, you should find the developer pop-up. So make sure you click on that and then press on OK. Nice, so we're gonna head to developer and then click on visual basic. This is gonna open up this new sheet as you can see. And within it, we want to add a user form. So for this, we're gonna go over to insert and click on user form. You can see what this looks like. Let's actually stretch this out. Basically within this area is where we'll see the data entry form. Let me move this over to the side as well. You're gonna need this properties area opened up. So to do that, if you can't find it here or on the left side, you just wanna go over to view and click on properties window. Great, so we said this is a multi-step data entry form. Therefore, we need to add a few different pages. So click on this multi-page icon. We'll put it right in here. And let me move this up all the way to the top right here and actually adjust it as well. Right now we have two pages though, ideally we want three, so we can just right click a new page and feel free to add more if you need to. 
within each of these three pages, we want to add the PowerPoint design. And for that, we just need to copy it from PowerPoint. So for page one, I would just want to select the whole area. How I'm able to select everything without having to select each individual piece is by selecting all of it and then just going to right click and grouping. Make sure you have it grouped and then all you need to do is control C to copy this. And once inside of the user form, we want to press on this image icon. Make sure we click it right around here and we want to remove the background style. So the border, we want that to none. And then same thing with the back style, we want that to a transparent. Now on the very bottom here where it says picture, we want to paste the image. So we just copied the image and to paste it, we just need to press Ctrl V, hit enter there. And you'll notice right now it doesn't look great and that's because the fit is not right. So we need to go over to the format area and click on size to fit. When you do so, it's going to expand out as you can see. And now let's actually drag this all the way to the top. We can make all of these parts smaller as well to make sure they fit inside of this section. So I'm going to make this smaller like this. I want to repeat the same step with this other one too. That's the first page. And now we want to follow the same steps for page two and page three. So again, we would go over to image, put it in here and we need to change the formatting. So the back style to transparent and the border style to none as well. And now we can go in PowerPoint and paste it in the picture area. Let me fast forward how I do these two. Awesome. So now if we go to page two or page one, you can see we have all of the images looking good, but we can't actually type anything in these text boxes. That's why we need to add the text box feature. That's going to be this thing right here, text box. And basically, we just want to create these shapes roughly around the same size as the grayed out areas. So like this one would fit, let's say, right around here. And we also want to make sure they don't have things like borders. So as the border style, instead of the single, I'm going to switch that to the none. Same thing goes with the back style. I don't want any, so I'm going to go for transparent. Now we should be able to add things in here. And basically, we want to copy this. So Control C and Control V to paste it and simply move it down to this next one. And same thing goes with the next page and page three as well. So let me fast forward how I do that. Awesome. So we've been able to add all of the different shapes across all of the pages. In fact, we can see what this looks like by pressing on this play button right here. You'll see we have all of the inputs so we can easily type data in here. That said, this part up top, the page one, page two, page three, doesn't look very nice. And we also said we're going to create some buttons here on the bottom. So let's work on that next by pressing on X here. These buttons actually work in the same way as the background images we've been working on. So all I need to do is head over to this part right here under image and let's click on that down over here. This first one, we said we don't want um, the transparency, so we want it transparent and we also don't want the border. So I'm going to put none under PowerPoint. It's going to be this part, the previous and the new. So we just want to select one of the two. I'm going to go for the next control C. And in here as the picture, I'm going to go over right here and control V to paste that. You can see what that looks like. We want to put the next, let's say right around here on this side and paste it on all three pages. Let me fast forward that. Nice. So we have it for page one, two and three. The thing is, we also need a previous button for page two and three. So let me work on those. It's going to be the exact same thing. It's an image again. And let me fast forward the next steps. Nice. So we've been able to add the next and the previous button across all three pages. That said, right now, even if you click on them, nothing actually happens, which is what we'll work on next. Before we get into that, this data entry form is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what VBA and macros can do in Excel. If you're looking to automate data analysis tasks, financial reporting, spreadsheet formatting, and more, you should check out our Excel VBA and Macros for Business Automation course. In it, you learn the fundamentals such as object properties, methods, and variables. And once you get comfortable with the basics, we'll introduce more dynamic features like conditional statements, logic functions, and data arrays. With this knowledge, you'll be able to automate common tasks like auto-generating pivot tables, formatting charts, and building interactive input boxes. Then you'll have two extensive case studies to apply the concepts you've learned. 
The first one will focus on automating a billing summary report for PwC's consulting team. And the second one will focus on building an automated PL statement for Mercedes Benz. So if you want to save hours of time in your future office tasks, head over to a link in the description below to get started with this program. Now moving up to step four, and we want to make all of this dynamic. And for this, the first thing we'll need to do is actually name all of these different input boxes. This way, Excel knows where to put them in the Excel file. So the first name one, instead of it being called text box one, we're just going to call this the first and this is going to be the last. And basically, I want to follow all of these same steps for the next ones. I also want to label them. So the first next, I'm just going to call next one. Then the second next is next two, etc. So make sure you label all of these different parts in the different pages. Let me fast forward how I do these. Great, so I've added all of the different names for both the text boxes and the buttons below, and we can now get rid of this top navigation. To do that, going over to the properties area, you're going to want to go for the multi-page one. That's the one we want to click on, and within this area, under the style, we just want to select this part and go for none. You'll notice that it's going to get hidden from the top part. That means we have this extra gap on the bottom, so let's actually edit this. Just going to select on this whole area and drag this slightly higher up. Awesome. Now that we've named all of these different text boxes, we can actually tell Excel what we want each one to do. And if you've made it so far into the video, you can actually download the finished version for free in the video description. Now we're going to add some instructions for Excel by going over to the view area and clicking on code. So right here, F7 is the shortcut. We can delete what was already there and instead I want you to type the following. Feel free to just copy this whole thing. Basically what this is saying is that when we press on the first next button, it should take us to page number two. Now I just want to copy this whole thing and hit enter here and paste it and third time as well. So this one is going to be for the second button and then this one right here is going to be for the third button. We want to do the same thing with the previous side as well. So instead of the next, it's going to be the previous. So previous one. And this one's actually going to go over to zero as the first page, if you recall, doesn't actually have any previous buttons in it. Now we want to do the same thing for the next one. So it's going to be previous number two. For the previous number two here, let's make sure we put a one instead. And now the great thing about all of this is that we can actually test it out and see if it's working correctly. So I can just press on the play button. And so we should be able to go to next to go forward and to go to previous to go back. So that seems to be working well. The only problem though is that if I press next on the very last one, you'll notice that I actually get a problem. That's because we haven't really told it what to do if you press that third next button. Let me put end here and actually go inside of the code. So view code again and see what we do. Basically, it's this part right here that's problematic as there is no page after this. In fact, what we wanted to do once we get to this third next button is go to the Excel file and within it, we wanted to actually write whatever the inputs were. And also once the first one is filled in, we don't want it to replace it. Instead, we want it to go one lower and paste it in here, basically follow that same pattern. So we're gonna have to program that very quickly. Here's the code that I've added and it's actually surprisingly easy to understand. So basically what I'm doing is within sheet one, that's the name of the sheet where I want the data to be. I want it to do the following, take the B range. So that's starting at column B and basically from there, get to the very bottom of where there's data and add an extra row. When we look at this here in Excel, I'm saying get to the bottom of this column B and wherever there's data, just go to the next row. So it would go to row six and start typing. If there's some data here, it would go to the next row. So row number seven. And then for all of these other columns, column C, column D, etc. Basically right here, it says for column C, I want you to add the last name part. Then for column D, I want you to add the email part, etc. And this very last part down here is basically saying to get out of the user form and just say this message once you've left. Obviously, in your case, you might have the data slightly differently, so make sure you change these parts. And same thing with the names. If you've named things differently, this is where you would do those changes. Awesome. So we're all set up and we should actually try to run it. But first, go over to user form. Just double click on that to make sure we start at page one. 
So within this part right here, I'm just going to click inside. So the actual image here and just go over to page one. This way it's going to start page one. So we can press on run. First thing it asks for our name. I'm just going to put some random data in here just to see if it's all working correctly. Press on next. I'm going to put data in this part too. Next again. And then just next. And when I press this button, it should actually add all of the data. It says entry submitted. So that's all looking good. And credit to this channel, which was the inspiration for this video and helped with a lot of the code as well. The final step is to write a macro such that when we press this button, that pop-up is going to show up for the data entry. For this, we'll go back to Visual Basic and click on Insert Module this time. And within it, we just need to write very simple sub new user. So that's going to be the name of this macro. And basically, we just want to show the user form one, which is the user form we've been working on. So we can just close out of this on the top right hand side and let me assign the macro. So right click on this shape and click on assign macro. We have the new macro called new user and just press on OK. So now if I click on new entry, we're going to get the pop up. Let me add some details in here quickly. And now when I press on next, you'll notice that we have all of this data submitted. As the final housekeeping item, we need to make sure this file is saved as a macro enabled workbook by going to file save as, or the shortcut is the F12 key. So I want to save it as a macro enabled workbook. Press on save. If you were feeling a bit lost writing those lines of code, you should watch this video over here to learn some basic VBA, or you can take our VBA and macros course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.